Hello and welcome to another edition of National Focus. I'm Jani Hector. Coming up, Fire and Ambulance Services issue a call against the abuse of the 999 emergency number. A DSC delegation ends a successful mission to Canada and work is nearing completion on Horseback Ridge Road. Stay with us for details of these and other stories right after this. Hey, I had a good time in town last week with a pretty girl, man. Hey, carry me next time when you're going now. Where we get paid Friday, we can go. Careful, they might catch AIDS. AIDS? Them girl pretty, pretty, pretty. Them girl can't get AIDS, man. I think it's only ugly women have AIDS. Anybody could get it. If you get sick, who you gonna tell your wife? Hey, your wife, come in. Hey, change the topic. Change the topic. Your family depends on you. Don't take home AIDS. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes, to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. The facts as they are brought to you every day, every day, every day, every day. only on GIS Channel 7. Welcome back. Work on the new Shawford water supply system is complete. This was confirmed by Public Relations Officer of the Dominica Water and Sewage Company, Duasco, Edward Regist, during an interview with GIS News on Friday. This is the first time that the Shawford community will be connected to the Duasco system. We're very happy to note that um, the BNTF provided just over $1 million um, to um, ensure that the community of Shufford um, received portable water um, from the Wasco supply. Um, that project is now completed. We're happy to note. And of course, uh, the residents of Shufford have begun enjoying water connections from the Wasco, a new 40,000 gallon storage tank, among other um, developments, have been put in place. And so we're very happy to note that over in Shufford, um, the residents there are enjoying water connections. We want to encourage um, other residents to come into the Wasco's offices and to, um, you know, apply for their connections. Just over a dozen persons so far have done so, and we're looking forward to, to more connections. Meanwhile, a team of four from the Dominica State College has recently completed a successful mission in Canada. The purpose of the mission was to gain insights in current technology used in agriculture. The Dominica State College has partnered with the Faculty of Agriculture of the University of Dalhousie and Kempsville campus of the University of Wealth to develop a new agriculture program at the DSC. Dean of the Faculty of Education, Merrill Matthew, explains. The program is to develop a vocational qualification that will not only be useful to people in Dominica, but also to people within the Caribbean. And that is why our, our goal is to develop the new program to such a quality that it will serve as a Caribbean vocational qualification level three, not only in Dominica, but within, within CARICOM. The DSC's mission to Canada included roundtable discussions as well as visits to various farms in Nova Scotia and Ontario. On the farms, we were privileged to see a number of entrepreneurs in Canada and to see how they went about their, their activities for the development of production and while at the same time reducing costs, costs for the, their projects. We, we also had a number of roundtable discussions where we examined critical aspects of vocational qualification for the agriculture program, a major one being the what we call CBET for short, competency-based education and training. 
Competency-based education and training is a special method for teaching vocational skills. It is one where the student is evaluated on individual competency and only once it is mastered, he or she moves on to others. In the traditional system, the focus is upon the teacher, but in the competency-based education and training, the focus is on the student. We take the student from, from where he or she is to, to where we want he or she to be, but very interesting, um, very important about CBET is that it allows the student to work at his or her own pace. Dominica's Fire and Ambulance Service is pleading with members of the public to refrain from making non-emergency calls to the 999 hotline. Fire and Ambulance Public Relations Officer Wayne Leta told GIS News that frequent and numerous prank calls to that number has become a serious matter. That has become a very big issue on island presently because as you may have been hearing, the telephone rings a lot. And in most cases, it's the 999. I would like to urge parents, because the culprits are actually children. You pick up the phone and it's children using the 999. Illicit comments to fire officers and police officers, those are not good. We are advising people, please, the 999 is an emergency line. Only use that number to transfer emergency information. Officer Leta revealed the troubling data about the situation, citing that the fire and ambulance service is required by law to answer all distress calls. I recall just a few months ago, we counted actually 177 calls within an hour. And of that 177 calls, only two of those calls were actually an emergency. The others were people doing nonsense, simply calling and want to pass a message to somebody else or to, uh, to talk nonsense and draw the fire and police officers in distress. It is stressful. We have the mandate to answer all telephone calls. So we have to answer it. And it's not. so we are advising, we are pleading, we are begging, please, please, the public, refrain from doing those things. And parents, if you have children, please do not leave your cell phone in the hands of those children whilst they do that. And young persons out there with their cell phone, it's distressful. As a matter of fact, we can give information that a that fire officer actually died responding to one of those nonsense already because the, the fire appliance that he was riding get in, got into an accident. They direct us to some old areas, some nonsense calls, and we respond to it. And then it can be tragic. The public is urged to cooperate with the fire and ambulance department to eliminate this deadly practice. In other news, one group in Dominica is preserving our culture and helping young people build self-esteem through stilt walking, commonly known as the Bois Bois. 28 young persons from the Africulture Stilt Walkers Inc. traveled to Barbados between July 28th and August 7th to participate in crop over celebrations. Group member Dwayne Charles spoke about his experience in Barbados. Oh, we, we will greatly appreciate it because it's like you know, they have stilt walkers over there but not like what we have. We have a lot of little children in a stilt walking group with us and compared to our costumes and compared to their costumes, our costumes are a little more from like, no not from more, explosive and you know a little more substance whereas they don't really have that that much. So they were pleased to see a lot of young children walking on the stilts you know, supporting in a large group and not being fair, scared of it. The Africulture Stilt Walkers Inc. consists of approximately 50 members as young as age 5. The group has been in existence since 1996 and is currently under the leadership of Ferdinand Webster with Cassandra Dewhurst as deputy leader. Mr. Webster, you know, great instructor. When he comes and he says, listen, this is quite long and follow his follow instructions and you get it, you start walking, then you start getting the feel for it, then 
Bambi running on the streets. Webster says it was his love for the art form that stirred him to form the group and he encourages others to join. The reason why I'm doing steals, I saw it first in Newtown. So it really started off in Newtown. And when I saw it, I just agreed, oh, I have to do that. And I tried it and it was fun. It was so much fun that it bring me all the way to Antigua. It bring me all the way to Martinique. It bring me all the way to St. Lucia. And it bring us to Barbados. And Barbados was the bomb. It was very good. And I would love to see our, the group go to a different level, most probably to New York for crop over, things like that. I want to see the group move on to. But we need more members to at least come in and show themselves and bring the interest so we can go forward. He says Africulture Stilt Walkers Inc. is not only about stilt walking, but the group helps young people to develop self-esteem and respect for self and others. The group actually take out young people off the street. It has some bad people on the street and there's a good ones on the street. So we actually bring them in so they can be a better person, a better tomorrow. They could be lawyers, doctors, things like that. But to take them off the street to be as good steel workers and to really have respect. When they see people on the road, people can respect them. Not because of stilts walking, but just respect them as a human being. And that's what we lack in Dominica. People doesn't really respect people. They just look at you as you're not nothing. But putting you in a group as in joining stilts, it will bring you somewhere. Because we don't just train people to work on stilts. We give them a little, a, a, what, um, to lift up their self, have a little self-respect. To respect people, so people can also respect them in the near future. Learning, a new, learning stilt walking is probably one of the biggest self-esteem boosters it possibly could have. Because doing that art form is not that easy as it may look. The Africulture Stilt Walkers Inc. sponsored by Domlek remains one of the largest performing groups in Dominica. In other news, work is nearing completion on the rehabilitation of the southern section of the Horseback Ridge Road. That was confirmed the last week Thursday by Parliamentary Representative for the Cardinago Territory, Honorable Ashton Grano. The $1.8 million project is being implemented by contractors Edgil and Associates and will also include the construction of a new road connecting the rehabilitated road to Concord, which is now being referred to as Tuna Village. This project is one of the is, as one of the major components funded by the Caribbean Development Bank under the loan agreement contracted by the government of Dominica to undertake the various projects identified by the Caribbean Territory Community Capacity Building Project. I am happy to report at this time that the rehabilitated section is now 99% complete while we speak and the new section 60% complete, that is the new road into Tuna Village. This project, the road, has created short-term employment for some of our skilled Kalinagos in that field, as well as some of our truckers. It also has a positive impact on our local caterers and fruit producers, and we should all be aware of the long-term impact this project will have when completed on our tourism product and our agricultural sector. Carinago Chief Garnet Joseph says this is a major achievement for the territory. It is one thing that, um, that many of us in our lifetime did not think possible, driving from, from Concord over the hill into, into the territory. I, I, many of us never thought this, this would ever be possible in our lifetime, but we must say that this road is almost completed. And finally, this news time, excavation works and pipeline operations began on Monday at the Dominica State College and the Yampice Junction. The objective of this project is to provide a sewage connection for the Dominica State College building, which is nearing completion. Public Relations Officer of the Dominica Water and Sewage Company, Edward Regist, told GIS News on Friday that over 1,600 feet of road will be excavated during the project. Regis explained that residents of Yampice, Bellevue Royal and Stock Farm will experience some traffic interruptions. We're asking um, all the stakeholders, including the general public, to um, give their cooperation. It will, the project is expected to run for about five weeks. 
and there will be road closures. The, the, the road will be closed um, between um, 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. and also again from 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. every day, Monday to Saturday, um, to facilitate the works. And so we're asking for the cooperation of the general public. We also note that students will be going back to school in early September. And so um, they will be facilitated to get to the school, to, 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 the, to the college. However, we want to ask the students, the staff, and all others um, within the general public to cooperate with the contractors to ensure the success of the project. Um, in, in the event of any emergencies, um, the, the contractor is also having uh, an emergency plan put together to ensure that that can be facilitated. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Marcus and St. Louis for the Creole highlights. Hello, good morning. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole, nommé C. Macpherson Saint Louis. Premièrement, ministère d'Éducation Honorable Peter Saint Jean, ni bon avis pour étudier en qui recevez vos scholarship pour étudier en People's Republic of China. Honorable Saint Jean Ba Abi Salam, pendant ces mois moni ou la se étudier là recevez vos scholarship ailleurs. Naturellement, les jeunes moni qui te dominent, tu toujours qu'à tout puis te trouver un dé qui pas qu'à réellement faire ça y est si posé. Ah, il nécessaire pour jeunes gens comprendre qui là y a qui te dominent pour éduquer quoi yo plus grand occupation yo en doit faire c'est pour éduquer quoi yo en n'importe fil qui yo ka yo ka étudier en place ça là pas quitter quoi yo seulement trouver quoi yo en plaisir place là mais seulement mettez quoi yo complètement en livio faire bien premièrement ba quoi yo et deuxièmement ba pays là à la nouvelle quatre officiers state college dominique visiter l'université en Canada Ou la yo tape bon nouvel ka konsene development agricolte. Misi Meryl Matthew si directe edikasyon State College Dominic. Nou vizite se universiti sa pis nou ni an agweman e pis se universiti sa pou ende nou pou develope an program nef agricolte. Program nef sa se yon nou bien bouzwe a Dominic Pis on lo moun ka di nou program na konou ni atrelman ka ni prepare moun pou ale study a university e sa nou bouzwen a Dominic se moun ki le yo fini an program a state college sa ale fè business yo kon sa nou le fè e pouvman à la production agriculture à Dominique. Quand ça, State College, nous, nous avons écouté ça, mon cadi, et puis nous avons décidé, la manière pour nous approcher ça, c'est pour nous développer un programme neuf. Je ne parle pas pour le Guantan, honorable Ian Douglas, qui a bien supporté les îles qui ont été battues en Guantan à présent. Selon honorable Douglas, ils ont fait la place qui a existé pour le projet Salam. On sa tout bagay en place pour projet la, marche bien. Ministre Douglas fait parole qui projet sa la même, qui mène employment ba moun en wan pey la. En ifo sa la, on le robe Douglas ka kwe a se moun wan nof a pey la, pou pon l'avantage si l'on projet sa la. Gouvernement Venezuela wan tre wanjman epi Dominic pou bati projet sa la. Et puis finalement, compagnie de Vasco qui a créé à ses étudiants State College Dominique pour patience pendant le projet de sanitation qui est bâti à présent. M. Edward Regis, c'est officier de relations publiques pour compagnie de Vasco. Ces étudiants, nous avons dit pour marcher les zing. Ok, comme ça, nous avons mis les voitures, c'est les voitures qui ont mis les voitures en, en junction Yampis. Bon, nous avons mis pour marcher, pour aller. Comme ça, nous avons avisé pour quitter les voitures qui ont mis les parce que aucun pour marcher teasing pour ça arriver à l'école mais ça bon pour tout le monde comme ça um, nous qui faciliter ou mais pas um, aller embêter ces monde là qui a fait travail là parce que il a pas un petit temps mais il um, um, est bon pour tout le monde mais fini Monsieur, mesdames ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent non moi c'est Mac Fossin Saint-Louis au revoir 
Learn how to contribute to a green environment in our national focus tip of the day. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep houseplants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Make your contribution to an eco-friendly environment by turning stuff off. Turn off lights, televisions, videos, stereos and computers when not in use. These can use up to 40% of the power when on standby. Also, unplug chargers as soon as your equipment is finished charging. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and your comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. Thank you for watching.